I, I was listening to this uh, um, this interview with uh, John Danaher. You ever heard of him? The, yes. Um, from from Henzo Gracie, uh, the Death Squad. Yeah, John Danaher. I love it when he says the fundamental asymmetry of the human body is. <laughs> he starts so many sentences that way. Oh, he does. Okay, okay. But you know, I, I I listened to him a couple of times before, and I found him like this guy's a genius. I really think he's uh, uh, he knows what he's talking about, and he has a very deep understanding yeah. of of you know like uh, of, of martial arts and grappling, especially. And he was explaining how essentially if you drill, because he doesn't believe in drilling, he says that if you just drill and you put a number in your head, like okay, I'm gonna do a hundred guard passes, mm. okay. That sounds like, but it's not actually going to necessarily make you good at guard passing. What you have to do is that you have to, <clears throat> you have to have progressive uh, overload. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm not using the right term here, but you got to progress that drill properly. So at the beginning, okay, you do a regular guard pass, but then after that, you might need your, um, once you do about, let's say, 100 of them, well, the next 100 can't be the same type of, of drill anymore. Now it's going to be a guard pass, but maybe your opponent is going to, is going to uh, give a little bit of resistance or you're going to give a yeah. little fake to the left and then go to the right. And then and you have to develop. So you got to progressively um, o progressive overload your drill or your, your training, so to speak, so that you get actually get better at it. Whereas yes. if you're just doing the same thing mindlessly uh, for reps. Just dropping out time, a sequence. Yeah, that, that only gets you so far. That just teaches you the move. Mm -hmm. I'm... There's a um, Dennis Kelly. He's he's a jiu-jitsu black belt and also a judo black belt. Um, I believe he lives in Australia. He's from Ireland originally, but he visited me in Shanghai and um, and he did a did a seminar about the omoplata at my gym, and it was just you know really basic information about the omoplata. And afterwards, I, I asked him, like, how would you how would you suggest practicing the omoplata, like you, like you, you've taught us the technique. How would you suggest practicing it? And he said, "Okay, let's do it like this. We're going to start the roll like uh, about two thirds of the way into the submission. So we've cleared the shoulder. Right, we're almost at the end of the omoplata. Right, all you have to do is you know sit up and twist and grab, and then you have it. Right, but the other guy's going to fight back. And so we we drill." Uh, I, I use the word drill differently than, than most people. A lot, a lot of people say drill when I say sequence. Um, so when I say drill, I mean there's an element of resistance. That means you fight back, but there's a very specific objective you're trying to accomplish. And a drill is going to be fairly short, like maybe 30 seconds, maybe 10 seconds, right? Whereas a sequence is like you put your, you, you go through the motions, right? Mm -hmm. So sequencing the omoplata, you... You go through the movement with a completely cooperative partner, so you learn how the movement works, how to move your body, right? But the drill that, uh, that Dennis Kelly put us through was this. We start with the omoplata almost completed. There's just one little thing to do, but the other guy fights back. So we have like 10 second reps of this, like see if you can finish in 10 seconds. And I realized right away, okay, we're learning something very valuable on both ends of the spectrum, how to defend, how to finish. Because a lot of jiu-jitsu classes are taught like this. They'll sequence a technique for like 30 minutes or so. They'll do a certain number of repetitions, like we're gonna do omoplatas today, sequence it, go through the motions 30 times with your partner. Okay, good, now let's roll. And then you roll and you start from whatever position, either they start standing or start from the ground, whatever. But maybe they'll get into a position to even attempt an omoplata once in the hour that they're ruling. And maybe not at all. And maybe in that one time they get in position to attempt the omoplata, the guy gets out before they even get to the end. And so they don't even know what it feels like trying to finish an omoplata against a resisting opponent. And then they go back to class and in the next year, maybe they get into a position to attempt the omoplata five or six times, okay, against a resisting opponent in all those roles. And how much improvement do they get? How good do they get at omoplatas in that you're, uh, not very much, okay? <laughs>
But this this method that Dennis Kelly showed us, like start when you're almost finished and resist and do that in 10 second incre increments, do it a whole bunch of times and then take it a step backwards. Okay, so you're like two steps away from finishing and then we fight for it and then take it back one more step. Now we're three steps away from finishing and then take it back four steps. We're four steps away from finishing. So exactly what you're saying, that progressive overload if you will, make it a little bit more difficult each time. But each step along the way, we ha we get the experience of fighting through each phase that we wouldn't necessarily get the reps in in live sparring. And this is something that I have I've taken to heart and I, I do this constantly. Uh, and since I've started training this way, a lot of people come to me and they're like, dude, you you you're not like other gyms. I'm like, good, because I don't want to be. Because the average gym, what are they? They're average. What does the average gym do? They, they do what everybody else is doing, and they get the same results everybody else gets, and they exist in mediocrity. And what do I want to do? I want to train fighters who consistently win as many fights as possible. I want to give them the best possible opportunity they can to win when they compete. And in order to do that, you need to use the best possible training methods. And so, you know, like John Danaher says, he, he says these things that shock people, like drilling is not as important as you think it is when we're, we're, we're saying drilling to mean sequencing, right? Mm -hmm. And that shocks people because that's how most people train. And then you look at a guy like Faraz Zahabi, who's always saying these very um, shocking things like you don't need to do with pad work and people are like what no people lose their minds like of course i need to do pad work and um you know people like me who tell people road work is not as necessary as most fighters think it is and they're like what but boxers have been doing road work for forever okay and and people challenge these ideas and it makes sense to challenge people who are challenging conventional wisdom. But you also have to ask yourself, is it, is, are your training methods giving you the results that you want? And if not, why not?